Hi, this is Fiji McAlpine with Do Yoga With Me. This is yoga for arm strength, a practice that is designed to create strength and stability in our upper body. For this practice, you'll need two blocks. I hope that you enjoy. Our practice today starts in a seated pose. Just take your time and sit with me for a moment to allow your lower body to really get grounded. So take a moment to close your eyes and physically arrive on your mat. This practice is obviously important to you as you've chosen to spend your very important time here with me, right here, right now. So by closing your eyes, you give yourself the opportunity to embrace this practice, all of its gifts, and to give yourself fully to it, physically and mentally. By closing your eyes, you also tune out of that external gaze and begin to open the internal gaze. To notice the subtle nature of your body and the energy flowing inside of it, the passage of the inhale and the exhale. Allow your eyes to now once again open, keeping the gaze nice and soft down the cheeks. Let the shoulders lift as high as they possibly can towards your earlobes. And then invite your inner shoulder blades towards the spine, down towards your hips, as you extend the crown of your head straight up towards the sky. Pushing evenly into both hips, take your arms out and up on the next inhale. And as you exhale, palm on palm, bring your hands into your chest. From here, interlace the fingers and push the palms out in front of your heart. And then draw your chin slightly in towards the heart as you start to extend your arms forward, spreading that area between the shoulder blades, rounding the upper back. With your next inhale, push the palms forward and up towards the sky as you sit tall. And then as you exhale, turn the upper body to the right, pulling the right shoulder back, pushing the left shoulder forward. Extend straight up into your strong and powerful arms. And then as you exhale, release the hands all the way down, right hand behind you, left hand wrapping around your kneecap, getting a nice firm grip there. Sit nice and tall on the next inhale, extending the spine both down into the tailbone and up through the crown of your head. And as you exhale, hug your navel in towards your spine and slowly take your gaze towards the back of your mat. With your next inhale, bring your gaze forward, sweep both arms overhead. And as you exhale, palm on palm, again, bring your hands down to your heart. Interlace the fingers, push the palms forward, drawing your chin towards your heart. Letting those shoulder blades slip away from the spine, rounding the upper back. Inhale now as you sit tall, sweeping your arms back, but dropping your shoulders down towards the earth. One more inhale here, pushing up into those strong and powerful arms. And as you exhale, slowly turn to the left. Hug the navel in using core strength. Now drop your hands down so your left hand comes behind your hips, right hand wrapping around the kneecap. Sit tall first, extend the spine into the tailbone, lift into the crown, and then exhale to deepen the twist, taking your gaze past your left shoulder towards the back of your mat. Inhale, arms float up. And as you exhale, palm on palm, hands to heart. Bring yourself forward to tabletop pose with your hands under your shoulders, your knees under your hips. Move around so that this frame feels comfortable and right for your body, flaring the fingers, anchoring through the index finger and its knuckle, moving your knees around so they're directly under your hips and hooking your 10 toes to the mat. With your next inhale, take the crown of the head and the tailbone up. Work your arms as straight as they can be. Feel the power of your arms moving from your shoulders straight down into your palms. And then as you exhale, push into your palms even more as you round your back, scooping the tailbone under and tucking your chin. Lift the back of your heart as high as you possibly can and push the hips forward. Inhale to come to a nice neutral position here. And as you exhale, find your first downward facing dog, sending your hips back and up. You can take some time pedaling up and down the heels, bending alternating knees, rolling your shoulders around in their sockets just to demonstrate to the mind that you actually do have quite a bit of mobility in the shoulders. 
and even shaking your head from side to side to try and soften the muscles that line your neck, that grip that area of your body in a protective way. See now if you can soften those muscles and use the weight of your head to give you some traction in your spine. And then use your breath to move energy up and down that channel. Feel the sides of your body getting longer as the hands push forward and the hips stretch back. Start to firm the front of your legs, engaging the quadriceps, lifting and defining your kneecaps, pushing again your arms as straight as they can be. And with your next inhale, glide forward and establish that first plank pose. Notice I said first because we all know there will be many. Sending your heels straight back, hugging them in towards one another, scooping your tailbone under, letting the back of your heart rise. Feel the power of your arms, but don't overburden the arms with this pose. Try and disperse the energy and the weight of your body evenly throughout it. The legs are responsible for holding their own weight here, toning your legs. Tailbone scooping under, your navel hugging in is helping the core engage to help support the weight of the torso. And the hands pushing firmly down, strength of the arms as the shoulders stack above your wrists. With your next exhale, bring your knees to the ground and your hips to your heels. Inhale to come forward to tabletop pose. And as you exhale, flip your right hand over, pushing down into the base of your right wrist. We'll be doing a lot of work with the arms today, which means we do a lot of work with the wrists. So just making sure we get some stretching in that reverse direction. We're gonna curl the fingers gently in towards the center of the palm, doing this to the best of your ability. You may have a generous bend in your knee, but working towards straightening the arm. Now flip the right hand over. Do the same thing on the other side. We'll flip the left hand, pushing down into the base of the wrist, getting some nice reverse flexion there, drawing the fingers in if you can towards your palm, steadying the breath, working that left arm as straight as it can go, and then flipping that left hand over. Now turning your fingers to face your kneecaps, working your hands closer together so that your pinkies are touching, the outer edges of your hands are touching and your palms are flat against the mat. Work your knees back about six inches and start to draw your hips towards your heels a second time. Try and push out into the heel of your hand, feeling that lovely stretch up the inner wrist and into your forearm. Now see if it's possible to bend your elbows down towards the mat, keeping your hands on the floor, at least keeping your fingers on the floor. Let the heel of your hand start to peel up, let the knuckles peel up, Keep the fingertips down, drop your elbows down, and then flip the hands in. Palms straight down, elbows separate shoulder distance apart. Coming now for the second variation of downward facing dog, we'll move into dolphins. We'll keep the forearms, elbows, and palms on the ground. Again, pushing down and stretching your hips back and up, letting your forehead hang towards the floor, your hips extend back. And just noting the distance between your forehead and the earth and seeing if it's possible to increase that distance by pushing down into your elbows, engaging the shoulder girdle to get that nice shoulder lift. Creating stability in the shoulders is one of the first important steps in arm strength. Having that nice strong shoulder girdle to help support us so that when we're using our arms and developing strength there, we're not overburdening the shoulders and the joints of the shoulders. Just breathing in and breathing out. Initiating that lift again a second time. Push down into the forearms, push down into your elbows, glide back into your hips. And then push into your palms. Nice big strong pulse down and you'll come all the way up. You can separate the hands if it feels that that's necessary. Let the shoulders roll wide, let your head hang heavy. Now lift your heels and start to walk your feet towards your thumbs. Let's establish that first forward fold and give the entire weight of the upper body to this pose, including the weight of your head, hanging down, letting your shoulders melt up towards your ears, relaxing your jaw, letting every part of your body go as soft as possible. 
One of the important ways to learn how to develop and to use strength and power in our practice is also to learn how to soften and be subtle. It's simply about learning the language or dialogue between the mind and the body, how to articulate your request so that your body responds. So we learn how to soften and release, which is just as important as learning how to engage. And bring your hands down to the mat on the next inhaling breath. Take the torso off your legs, coming halfway up, Ardhava Tanasana. Now we can move into a more dynamic forward fold, engaging the legs as much as possible, engaging the core, and then pushing down into your fingers, bending your elbows straight back, tucking your chin in towards your throat, and trying to add some of the weight of the body into your hands. Soften your knees here, let your hips sink down to the level of the kneecaps, bring your torso up off the thighs so that it's hovering. And then take your hands behind you, palms rotating towards the earth, thumbs turning out to the side so your shoulders come onto your back. Notice that it feels like your chest gets a little more narrow here when you squeeze the shoulders in. Scoop the tailbone under, rock a little more weight into your heels. Again, hug the navel in, a little bit of a pelvic tilt. Take your arms out to the side. See if you can keep your arms out of your peripheral gaze as you slowly extend them up. See if the thumbs will touch. Let your hands find one another. On the next exhale, lower your hands out, squeeze the shoulders in, and again, bring them down beside your hips. We'll do that one more time. Scoop the tail under first, rock weight into your heels, inhale, Take your arms out, squeeze the shoulders in, all the way up so your thumbs touch. Bring your hands again back out and all the way down. Roll forward into that nice passive forward fold. Palms rotating towards the sky, let everything soften. Bring your fingers in line with your toes, halfway up on the inhale. Active forward fold, push down into your hands, exhale. Bend your knees, lower your hips, lift your head and heart, inhale. Bring your hands out in front of you as you exhale. On the next inhale, follow your hands to stand. And as you exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Take one full cycle of breath here, all the way in, all the way out. Acknowledging the strength and the power that you already have in those arms being grateful for everything that they currently do for you and grateful for everything that they will do for you as you develop that strength gradually and naturally over time. Drop your hands beside your hips, inhale, arms reach. Exhale as you bring the hands forward and down. Halfway up, inhale. Step back with your left leg as you exhale. Stay high on the toes and the ball of your back foot in your exalted base. Take time to shift the hips, left hip forward, right hip back. Push down and out into your feet and then reach the hands forward and up. On the next exhale, slowly sink down with the legs. You can square the hips, draw the tailbone under, roll the shoulders back and down. From here, take the hands, interlace the fingers, palm on palm, but release the index finger and thumb. Index fingers pointing straight up, thumb pointing straight back. Arm bones are moving back behind your ears and down with the shoulders. Now push back into your left heel, forward with your right knee, and come to a place where you're pointing the index finger forward by bringing the torso forward. Strong arms projecting from your shoulders to your elbows, elbows to your wrists. Try and keep those lines of the arms strong and powerful. Now with your next exhale, both hands come down to the inside of your right foot. From here, take your right hand and slide it behind your right heel to the outer edge of your right foot. Shift your left hand slightly back so that your hands feel that they're in a line. Now bend your right elbow out to the side and try and nuzzle your right shoulder behind your right knee. Push down into your palms, arms go straight just like you were in plank and your right foot should float. Strong arm, strong core, swing the right leg back into downward facing dog. 
and roll the shoulders away from your ears. Take a breath in and exhale until you're completely empty. With your next inhale, float your right leg up towards the sky, keeping the stability and strength in both arms. Draw your right knee into your chest as you come forward, exhaling. Inhale, take the right leg up. Now take that right knee to the outside of your right arm as you exhale. Make a nice strong connection there, actually tap it. Inhale, right leg up. Do that one more time, exhale. Now keep that right knee on the back of your right arm as you bend your elbows as though you're doing chaturanga. Now straighten the arms and take the right leg back and up. As you exhale, lower your right foot next to your left. Lift both heels high and step or hop between your thumbs. When you arrive, come halfway up on the inhale. Nice active forward fold as you exhale. Bend your knees, lower your hips, swing your hands out in front, pause here. Roll the tailbone under, try and elevate the arms to the best of your ability, drawing the shoulder blades towards one another. Now bring the hands back down to the mat, nice active forward fold, halfway up inhale, right leg steps back, exhale. Stay high on the toes and the ball of your back foot, pushing back into your heel, squaring your hips. Bring the hands forward and up when you're ready for your exalted base and sink down into the legs. The shoulders relax, square the hips, roll the tailbone under, nice pelvic tilt. Bring your palms together, interlace the fingers, all but the index finger and thumb. Index finger is pointing up, thumb straight back. Arm bones are moving back, shoulders plugging down. Nice strong engagement of the lower belly as the navel hugs in towards the sp that spine, trying to create a sense of stability. Now bring your torso forward to hover over that left leg. Keep the arms strong, projecting from the shoulders to the elbows, elbows to the hands. Now both hands drop to the inside of your left foot. And you're gonna tuck your left fingers behind your heel to the outer edge of your foot. Scoot your right hand back so it feels like your hands are in line with one another. Bend your elbow to the side, nuzzle the left shoulder under. Now push down into your hands, strong arms. That left leg floats. Swing the left leg back to downward facing dog. And take a full cycle of breath all the way in, shoulders roll apart, head hangs heavy, all the way out. Now inhale, take the left leg towards the sky. Exhale as you draw your knee forward to your chest. Inhale to take the left leg up. Exhale to tap the outside of your left arm. Inhale, take the left leg up. And again, tap the outside of your left arm and hold. Now bending your elbows as though you're doing chaturanga. Straighten the arms. Take the left leg back and up. And lower the left foot down next to the right. On the next inhale, move the chest forward to stack your shoulders over your wrists. As you exhale, tone the legs, tone the belly, elbows close, halfway down or less. Straighten the arms and then move back. Take a full cycle of breath in and exhale all the way out. Now let's bring the knees down to the ground. Take the heels back onto your hips, or your hips back onto your heels. Wiggle side to side. And we're gonna take a little moment to think about building the strength in our arms, stabilizing the shoulders and what that really means. I want you to be in this for the long haul with me for as long as your practice can possibly play out. In order for that to happen, we need to have patience with our practice and to realize that building the strength that we need in our arms for so many poses that we're excited to do will take a little bit of time and a lot of dedication. So I'll be here for you. You just be here for me. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be really looking at Chaturanga Dandasana. This is a pose that we do in transition that we're moving in and out of frequently throughout our practice. It's a great pose to help develop the strength that we need for lift in arm balance poses but it's one that can really wear on our shoulders over time. So take your hands, set them mindfully as though you're moving into plank, and then move into plank. 
Make sure that when you're in plank pose, the angle that's being created by your body is head higher than the heart and hips lower than the heart. That you're not swaying the hips down and taxing the lower back. If you need to bring your knees to the floor in the beginning of working on Chaturanga, that's a great idea just to help preserve that strong angle. You're still working on strengthening the arms. When you're ready, the knees will come off the floor in full plank. When you come down halfway or less is really what I am saying and what I mean. So your elbows stay close to your ribs, you drop down, your shoulders stay higher than your elbows. Push the arms straight and bring your knees down, sit back on your heels. Doing chaturanga with incredible awareness, mindfulness and structure is a lot harder than just letting your body slip in and out of it. So with that mindfulness, you're really creating a lot more strength, getting a lot more bang for your buck every time you do it. If you find that it's incredibly difficult to do quickly in a lot of these practices that we have, you can always hold your plank instead and then move into downward facing dog. Doing just a few chaturangas per practice might be a great place for you to start. Every time you do chaturanga, try and do it mindfully, or if you're too tired, give yourself the opportunity to skip and hold plank. It's not a resting pose, but it's a great alternative. It's gonna keep your shoulders nice and safe, and it's gonna give you the longevity to your practice. Let's try it one more time, knees on or off the floor, halfway down or less. Notice the shoulders are open, shoulder blades on the back. Push the arms straight, and find downward facing dog. Take a full cycle of breath in, and exhale all the way out. Now lift your heels, look to your hands, step or hop between them. Fingers on the floor, come halfway up, inhale. Exhale to a nice active forward fold. Bend your knees, sit down in that deep chair of Ukatasana, floating your arms as high as you can. Squeeze the shoulders together. Extend or project out into your elbows and then into your wrists. Palm on palm, stand tall. Take a full cycle of breath in. Exhale all the way out. Inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, bring the hands forward and down beside your feet. Halfway up on the next inhale. And as you exhale, step your left leg back. Pivot the left heel down to the floor. Turn your toes to the long side of your mat. Bend your right knee to stack over your ankle. Take the left hand, reach the left hand forward and come up to warrior two to begin. Sink down into the legs, push out into both feet, shoulders stacking here above your hips. Take your hand, right hand now and extend it beyond your right toes. Bring the right hand to the inside of your right heel or ankle and take the left arm straight up towards the sky. Push both shoulders back. Push the pelvis forward. Use the strength of your right arm now to actually push your right knee back. Take your left arm and extend it beyond the top of your head, still drawing the left shoulder away from your ear. Notice the left palm is pointing towards the ground. The right palm will be pointing towards the sky as you swing your right hand towards your left hip. Split the energy of both of your arms in two different directions. Almost as though you're doing Hanumanasana, the splits, but you're doing it with your upper body instead of your lower body. Strengthening your arms and your shoulders. Now inhale in one movement, come back up to warrior two. And exhale, spiral your hands down to mat. Take the right leg up towards the sky on an inhale. Take the right knee to the outside of your right arm as you exhale. Take a nice long inhale here. And as you exhale, come halfway down or less. Straighten the arms, inhale. Step into downward facing dog, exhale. Lift your heels high, inhale. Step or hop between your thumbs, exhale. Halfway up, inhale. And fold forward, exhale. Bend your knees, sit down in that chair of Vukatasana. Project from your shoulders to your elbows, elbows to your wrists. Find that nice, deep forward fold on the next exhale. Halfway up, inhale. Step your right leg back, exhale. Pivot the right heel to the mat, turning the toes out. Bend your left knee to stack over your left ankle. Push down and out into both feet. And inhale, 
as you come up to warrior two. Sink down into that base first, stacking your shoulders over your hips, pushing down and out into both feet, reaching that left hand forward now, dropping the fingertips to the inside of your heel or your ankle, stacking your right shoulder above your left. Push both shoulders back as you push the hips forward. Gentle rise, easy follow the breath here. The power of your left arm is holding your left knee back. And now you extend the right hand beyond the top of your head, palm turned down. Feel the strength of the arm moving from the shoulder to your elbow, elbow to your wrist. Now the left hand starts to reach back towards your right hip, palm facing the sky, and the energy of your arms is splitting in two different directions. In one fluid movement, inhale to come up to warrior two. Exhale, spiral the hands down to mat. Inhale, take the right leg up. And exhale, the left knee to the outside of your arm. Stay for the inhale. And exhale, halfway down or less. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, step back. Full cycle of breath in. And exhale all the way out. Inhale, lift your heels, and as you exhale, bring your knees down to the ground. Go ahead and find your blocks and bring your blocks onto the mat. With your blocks on the mat, push the palms down in the center of the block and establish that nice, strong, high plank pose again. It'll feel a little bit different now that we have increased elevation. It's actually like we have longer arms. This makes the pose easier or feel easier. It also helps to inform the body as how we should be distributing our weight and where we should be engaging and what is actually possible for us as far as our lines go. We want the shoulders over the wrists, pushing palms down into the floor, but also distributing the weight evenly between the hands. Crown of the head is forward, heels push back, everything about the legs is toned. Tailbone drawing under, back is lifting, gaze is down and you're breathing. Maybe you're even smiling. Maybe you're wondering how long you have to stay here. Just another cycle of breath. It's building that strength gradually and naturally. Now bring your knees down, keep your hands on the blocks, and retreat back into child's pose. Let everything soften. Remember that it's important to learn how to let go, to be soft, as well as it is to engage. And with that next inhale, bring yourself forward again. Engage into that plank pose. And now let's try what we learned with Chaturanga, coming down halfway or less. Even Chaturanga will feel a little bit easier with these blocks. Gazing forward, halfway down or less, elbows close to your ribs, shoulders stay on the back, heart is open, and push straight down. Now move back into downward facing dog. If it's easier for you, you can scoot the heel of your hand back towards the far edge of the block. Let your head hang. Enjoy the traction that's created here. And with your next inhale, take your right foot and float the right foot towards the sky. As you exhale, pull your right knee into your chest, coming forward. Inhale the right leg up. Now take your right knee over to your left elbow. Do that one more time, right leg up. Draw the knee to your left elbow. Shoot your right leg out to the side and bring the weight of your body into your right hand. Tip to the inner arch of your left foot. Use the strength of your legs, the strength of that right arm and shoulder and take the left hand up towards the sky. Stacking as though you were in side plank pose. Lifting up, spreading the shoulders, engaging the lat on the right side of your body as well as your obliques. Learning how to use all of those supporting muscles is so key. It's not just the muscles of the arms, but the lats and the torso, the core muscles that we have that can really help to support and give the lift that we need in a lot of these arm balances. Take the left arm over your head. Project so that you have a straight arm. Bring that left hand down. Bring your right knee again into your chest and step back into your plank. Take big breath, smile with me, chaturanga. Straighten the arms and move back 
into downward facing dog. Again, you can scoot the heel of your hand a little bit further back if that makes it easier in this pose. Let the head hang heavy and breathe. And with your next inhale, take your left leg and reach that left leg up towards the sky. As you exhale, bring your knee into your chest. Inhale, take the left leg up. Exhale to tap your right elbow. Inhale, left leg up. Do that one more time, tap your right elbow and shoot your left leg out to the side, landing on the outer edge of the foot. Now lean into your left hand, drop to the inner arch of your right foot and stack your right arm above your left. Right shoulder above your left, using your obliques, your lats, lift your hips high, breathe. Take the right arm, extend it over the top of your head, palm facing down. and then bring the right hand down onto the block. Take your left leg, step it back into plank, inhale, exhale, chaturanga, inhale to plank, and exhale, knees to the ground, forehead to the floor. And very slowly, walk your hands off the blocks. You can actually move the blocks to the middle of your mat but to the outside. Let's bring ourselves forward again and do a second round of reverse flexion for the wrist, starting with the left hand this time. Flip the palm over, curl the fingers in towards your palm. Use your breath to smooth out any of those rough edges. And then flip the left hand over, same thing on the other side. Now pushing down to the base of the right wrist. Draw the fingers in towards the palm. Flip the right hand over. Move down to the base of elbows and forearms. Make sure the elbows are directly under the shoulders. Do that little measurement if you need to. Heel of the hand nuzzling into your elbow. Palms flat on the earth. Push down into your elbows and notice that engages your shoulders. That's what we want. Keep those shoulders engaged as you hook your 10 toes to the mat and again lift up to dolphin. Working on building the strength in the muscles of the arms but also building strength and stability in the shoulders so that those pieces can all work together to help us in those arm balance poses. Now we're going to move our feet slightly closer to our base, to our elbows, just a few inches. That's going to increase the workload on the shoulders as we move our hips forward and give a little more weight to the upper body. Feeling lighter in your legs, it's now possible to take your right leg towards the sky if that's available to you today. When you lift your right leg, if you start to feel like you're collapsing in your shoulders or rounding, dropping your head towards the floor, you might not be ready yet. It might be better to have both feet on the floor and work on building that strength. Soon enough, you'll be ready to take that right leg up. Let's bring the right leg down if it is lifted. Take a moment, lift your heels high, drop them down. Now take the left leg towards the sky. Notice again if lifting the limb is causing you to collapse in the shoulders or round in the back. Keep pushing your elbows into the floor and moving your forehead away from the mat. Bring that left foot down. Lift your heels, push them back. Now from here, bring the knees down to the ground and belly to the thighs, palms facing up. Breathe into those shoulders. Very slowly walk your hands in towards your knees. Round the spine up. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. Bring your hands to the floor so you can cross your ankles and bring your feet forward. Scoot so that you feel like you're in the middle of the mat. And it's time to find those blocks again. Bring the blocks now to the outside of your hips. Make sure that it feels like they're in line with one another and that you can push your palms down towards the earth. Stack your elbows over your wrists, your shoulders over your elbows. Noticing that when you straighten your arms, it's gonna shrug the shoulders up. And that won't be for too long because we'll be lifting the hips. 
Have the hands in a nice position here. Look at your toes, engage the legs. So we're asking the shoulders and the arms to get stronger, but we need to work with the rest of our body to help out. So toning the legs is gonna help plug those legs back into the core. Using the core to help with the initiation of the lift is gonna take some of the burden out of the arms. Start with those nice toned legs, push into your palms, feel the arms go straight. Now lean forward slightly. Feel or sense where your tailbone is. And I want you to lift your tailbone up and pull it backward. As you do this, your hips are going to float. Start to push down into your hands, lift your hips high, engage the core, hips back, chest forward, gaze forward, breathe, and come down. You'll be practicing a few rounds of this. Over time, the lift will feel easier and you'll be able to hold it for longer and longer portions. You're doing as much as you can do today. Push down into your palms for our second round. Think about where your tailbone is. Tone those legs. Scoop the tailbone up. Pull it back. Engage the core to lift the hips. Push down into your hands. And slowly release. Now for this third and final round, we'll be lifting the hips just as we were before. We're going to keep the legs toned and plugged in. And we're going to give one final pulse with our arms down and that final pulse is going to lift the legs up off the mat so you're completely floating. It might be so fast today that it's just half a millisecond of a little bit of a hop. You can do anything for half a millisecond. So give it your best. Try and get those feet, those legs off the ground. Give everything that you have into this. So we're going to do the lifting of the hips first. Push down into your hands. Lift your hips, lift them higher. Now I want you to imagine for one second that your mat has turned into hot lava and you need to get your feet off and down. You did it. We're gonna be trying to engage and lift and stay as long as you can. It's gonna take practice some time, but that first initial hop is the first step. The first time you do it, it's probably a little bit longer than the day you did before, so that's a major step forward in your practice. Gonna take the blocks now and shift them off your mat. Bring your hands back behind your hips, fingers pointing forward, point your toes straight down towards the ground. Roll the tailbone under, inhale, lift your hips up. Exhale, slowly release. Now bring your hands beside your hips. See if it's possible to just lift your hips without the blocks. Push down into your palms, engage the core, tailbone back, hips up. And release. From here, we're gonna bring the hips towards the center of the mat, feet forward, arms forward. Interlace your fingers, roll the palms out in front of you. Inhale to take your arms up. Draw the shoulders down away from your ears. Lean back slightly and as you exhale, twist the upper body to the right. Inhale back to center and exhale to the left. Inhale back to center. Exhale, push your palms forward, round your upper back. Release the shoulders. Inhale, come all the way back up. And as you exhale, let your hands extend out in front of the chest, pull the shoulders onto your back, tuck your chin, and start to move slowly towards the earth. Let your head rest on the mat. Shift your feet around so they're hips distance apart. Ankles stacking under your knees. Scoop the tailbone under here and then lift the hips up using the strength of the legs. Take your hands and interlace the fingers behind your back. Push down into your hands, push down into the back of your arms, tuck your chin into your throat, coming into a variation of bridge that helps to release the top of the shoulders. Strengthening the arms even here.
Now release the interlace of the fingers and slowly roll the hips back down. Part of having strong arms is remembering to keep those muscles that can support us in arm balances like the lats and the core nice and strong. So let's bring the knees in towards the chest, flex the feet, and then push the feet out so you're creating a 90 degree angle with your legs. Roll the tailbone under, push down into your lower back, feel the kidneys seal down to the floor. Slow, steady, even cycles of breath. Take your hands on your quadriceps. With all of the power that you can manifest in your arms, I want you to push against your legs as hard as you possibly can and all of the power of your legs is gonna push back. Not only are you strengthening your arms here, but you're strengthening your core and you're getting them to fire together. And soften, let your feet sink. Let your hands fall open and lift your hips. Take a few cycles of breath here. Let that wonderful burst of heat that was created by that strong core pulse, just move through your body. Slowly roll the hips back down. Again, bring your feet up. Let's do one more round. Let's see if we can hold for 10 seconds. Give it everything that you possibly have. Hands on your quadriceps, flex your feet, kidneys rocking down into the mat. Your navel is dropping down towards the floor and then you start to push. Push with your legs, push with your hands as hard as you can, push. Breathe. Five more seconds. And soften. Last time, lifting the hips, take them up. You can bring your arms over your head here, just let them fall open and long. Roll your hips all the way down. Let your knees gently sway from side to side. Feel the sides of your waist getting longer. Bring your knees back to center. Extend your legs one at a time. Place those arms beside you with gratitude for all that they've done today, all of the work, all of the strength that they've developed. Remember in your body as well as your mind that importance of softening and letting go. After such a dedicated practice where the intention is to build strength from the inside out, allowing us to soften from the outside in. Start to gently move your fingers and your toes. Feel the energy carrying down your arms and your legs. Invite your knees to come in towards your chest. Use your arms now to embrace the lower body. Use the lower body to help you rock up to a seated pose. Take a moment to sit as tall as you truly are. Bring your hands into your heart center. Come back to this place often, this place of centered and stillness, remembering the balance of strength and softness. Enjoying this practice today, all the energy that it brings to you. Until next we meet, namaste.